All right, guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's another bright sunny day here in South Alabama. And in today's video, I'm going to spill the dirt, literally, uh, how you can turn your passion for gardening into some serious green. And I'm just not talking about the leaves on your plant, so don't go anywhere. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just getting started, planter boxes are a fantastic way to flex your green thumb and to make some extra cash on the side. In today's video, I'm going to share with you five tips that will help you save time and to put more money into your pocket and to plant the seeds of success. Before we get started, there are two channels on YouTube I think you ought to check out. The first one is Who's the Boss? He has several videos on making planter boxes and there are free plans that you can download. And the second one is Brady Hommel. He has a lot of good looking planter boxes to choose from. I made several of these and they sell very well in my area. I will include links to both of those channels in the description below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with tip number one. Okay. Starting with tip number one, my first suggestion is to make yourself a story pole such as this one for doing your cross cuts. When you are cutting the fence pickets to their final lengths, you're going to have to make a lot of cross cuts. And if you're going to be breaking down the fence pickets with either a miter saw or a table saw cross cut sled like this one, this particular jig is going to help you to save a lot of time. Okay, in order to make this simple jig, all you have to do is grab yourself a scrap piece of wood, preferably plywood or any other type of wood for that matter. Just make sure that it's not warped or twisted or bowed. Okay, once you find yourself a piece of wood, you then are going to square up both ends of the board. Next, I take my tape measure and mark various lengths along the board. Now when you are following the plans for the planter box or who's the boss, you're going to have to make cross cuts at three different measurements. One at 12 and 3 quarters of an inch, one at 14, and then one at 16 inches. Next I place the board against the fence on my cross cut sled or miter fence if you're using a miter saw and then make cuts being careful not to cut all the way through the board. The way that this jig works is that rather than having to break out a tape measure each and every time to mark the fence picket and then make your cut, all you have to do is take the jig and line the saw kerf up with the saw blade. Just be careful not to put pressure against the side of the saw blade because it will throw your measurement off. Once I have the jig in place, I then secure my stop block. I then remove the jig and now you're able to make repetitive cuts at that distance. Not only is this going to help you to save time, but it's also going to help maintain consistency giving a nice finished product. So that is tip number one. Moving on to tip number two. Tip number two is another jig similar to the one I just mentioned before, except this jig is for ripping. I made this jig specifically for the planter box by Brady Hommel. Uh, kudos to him for coming up with that design. It is a really nice looking planter box. Okay, so when you are following the plans for that planter box or some of the ones by Who's the Boss, not only will you have to make a lot of cross cuts, but you will also have to rip a lot of the pieces to various widths. So this jig works in the same fashion as the jig that I just mentioned earlier. The difference is, is that this jig helps you to quickly align the rip fence on your table saw without having to double check a double check the measurement with a tape measure and it also once again helps to maintain a level of 
consistency. And the way that this particular jig works is the same as the crosscut jig. I'm basically going to find a scrap piece of wood, I then make measurements, then I make saw cuts, being careful not to go all the way through the board. And then once you've made your cuts, you go ahead and align the saw kerf with the blade on your table saw. And then what I do is I just move the rip fence over to where it just kisses the side of that board, being careful not to put pressure on the blade. I lock my fence down and then I remove the jig. And now I'm able to make rip cuts at that particular distance. Once again, this is going to help save you some time and it's also going to uh, give you some consistency with making the planter boxes. So tip number two is to make a rip jig like this one. Okay, moving on to tip number three. Tip number three, I suggest make yourself an assembly jig. The way that I made this jig is that I took a piece of plywood and if you don't have plywood, MDF will work just fine. Just make sure that it's flat. Next, I took four pieces of plywood and with two of those pieces, I glued and nailed them on one side, making sure that the inside edges are flush with each other. Next, I took the two remaining pieces and with a square, I glued and nailed those pieces into place, making sure that they are 90 degrees to this fence over here. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, how does this jig come into play when making the planter boxes? So allow me to demonstrate. When you are making the planter boxes, what you're basically doing is you're forming the sides first, and then you're attaching the side pieces with more side pieces. So let's pretend that these pieces here are your side pieces and that these two pieces here are the leg pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take the side pieces and press them into the corner and also against the fence, making sure that they're uh, flush against the fence. Next, I put my glue down and then I nail the leg into place. And what this is going to do is it's going to now give me a nice clean edge. Once I have the leg in place, I'm then going to rotate the assembly to the other side here, making sure it's against the fence and in the corner, put my glue down and then nail the other leg into place. And so what this does is it gives me two nice clean edges that are flush, flush with each other. And when I go to attach the side pieces, I'm not having to worry about any gaps and voids, plus it eliminates any um, guesswork and, and ultimately it's going to make the finished product come out better. So tip three, is to make a, a similar jig like this one. Okay guys, we're almost to the end. For tip number four, I recommend using some off cuts from a fence picket to use as a shelf bracket for the shelf pit shelf pieces. What I recommend doing is buying a couple of extra fence pickets and dedicate those to be used as shelf brackets. I've had several customers ask me how much weight they can place inside the planter box and so just to be on the safe side I just installed a couple shelf brackets along the bottom of the planter box to make it more sturdy. You can either do it on two sides or do it on all four sides that's entirely up to you. In order to install the shelf brackets what I do is I cut the pieces to the final width and then I glue and nail those along the bottom edge of the planter box. And you also will find that this makes it a lot easier to install the shelf brackets or the shelf pieces, uh, excuse me, uh, rather than trying to align the shelf pieces with the bottom of the planter box and then eyeball it and trying to nail it in place. So um, by using the shelf brackets, it's going to eliminate any extra nail marks on the outside of the planter box and it's going to make for a better looking finished pocket. So make shelf brackets. Okay, tip number five, and this is my final tip, is that when marketing or advertising your planter boxes on Facebook Marketplace or online, is to be sure to take really good pictures. It's all about presentation. And when it comes to selling planter boxes, visual appeal is the key. 
So think outside the box and get creative with your displays. If you can, try to stage your planner box a little bit to make it more attractive. This will show potential buyers how they can elevate their outdoor space with your unique and creative displays. Just remember that a good quality picture will sell your item faster than anything. So take good pictures. So whether you're looking to supplement your income or start a small side hustle or you just want to grow your own food, planter boxes are fun and easy to build. So get out there, get your hands dirty and start making money. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and I will catch you later.